welcome back. Tony Ferris here, author of Park Place, creator of Park Place Education. Tactic number six of tactic 16 on the strategies that we deploy on a daily basis to find the gold mine deals out there, the, the deals that are off market. Those are the ones where you get the, the 12, the 15, the 20% cap rates. Uh, the deals online, yeah, everyone's looking at those. Everyone wants those deals. Uh, so here we go. Tactic number six, postcard mailings. This is huge. This is definitely a game changer when it comes to looking for and acquiring mobile home parks. All right, postcards. So perfecting your postcard, let me tell you, I have been freaking beat up along the way like no other. Um, you name it, from giving out my own phone number to um, just wrong thing after wrong thing. And I've learned so much. We've got some great stuff in this video that I'm going to be sharing with you. Now, number one is setting up your, your phone number. My first postcard mailing, I sent out a thousand postcards with my good old 951 personal phone number. And guess what? I still get people calling me, in, <laughs> including residents, um, just simply because I, I, I wasn't educated enough at the beginning and I gave out my personal cell phone number. So if you can get one thing from this video, just one thing, it's never have your personal phone number. I use Grasshopper and I can definitely uh, include a link for you at the end of this video as well. Um, they're a really great platform system where uh, the, the resident or the seller, anybody essentially dials that number and then it gets rerouted to your phone number as well. You can also have different you know, press one for, for billing, two for, for, for a plumber. I use Grasshopper for uh, each and every single one of our mobile home parks. Now, here's a, here's a really cool, quick strategy, if you will. Let's just say, for example, that um, I meet investors and in, in, in say they want to buy a park in, in Tennessee, for example. Well, what's one of the main area codes in Tennessee? It's, it's 901. Now, Here's the thing is, is a lot a lot of these owners, they're savvier than you think. And if I call them with with my number, an Orange County number, uh, uh, Orange County, California, you know, 714 area code, they're going to be like, who is this damn whippersnapper from California thinking that he's going to come in and swoop on my deal as opposed to a local area code? Now, the great thing with Grasshopper is you can pick your own area code, which is super cool. Now, one of the things that I just kind of briefly want to cover here is uh, you want to find a way to establish a connection on your postcard. So as you can see here on, on this one on the right, what I did is I've got a 901 area code. Now, this is when we are marketing to Tennessee. I have my personal email on this, so it's not like a like a huge dot com, we're this major business dot com. So what you're doing is, is you're portraying um, just just a small time investor. Um, now, again, you, you want to be very calculated on your questions. As you can see, if you would like to, or have you ever considered? And again, preservation of capital gains, uh, and, and then small time operator. You're you're not portraying yourself as hey, I'm the freaking third largest owner in the whole entire country, sell me your part. You're a mom and pop looking for deals from mom and pop sellers as well. So again, be personal. That's the biggest thing. Pain points. So right here, here's my very first postcard. As you can see in the bottom right, call Tony. So yeah, if you want to call me, there's my personal number as well. Um, and I just had it on there, so I, I just didn't know um, thousands and thousands upon mailings. And I, I've got stories for days. I've been in meetings before, and I'm not able to answer the phone, and and, and I got to put it to voicemail. It's well, it's it's obviously an owner that that got the card, and he leaves a voicemail, and um, you know I'm still in meetings. Then he calls back again. He's like, he's like, damn it. He's like, you sent me a postcard. What? what do you not pick up the phone? Do you want to buy my park or what? Because I want to sell it. So again, that's, you know, that's where I made a huge mistake at the beginning. 
you definitely want to use a separate phone number where you can have it rerouted and or redirected. Um, what, what, one of the few things that, that you definitely want to consider as we go into these bullet points is, is the pain points for, for sellers as well. Um, a lot of them are, you know, the, the parks are mismanaged. Um, they're, you know, the, the sellers aren't taking really good care of them. And, and when I say pain point, what I mean is um, it's okay if, you know, we buy, we buy turnaround parks. Um, we, we take parks in any condition. So you, you definitely want to, to, to convey yourself that way. Um, pain points. So here you go. Let me help you structure a sale that in ways to still provide hassle-free residual income. So as you can see, hassle-free, there's another pain point. It's they don't want to deal of the frustration. Um, another pain point is, is um, you know, you can put we buy cash or, um, you know, let, let us help you structural, structure a simple, successful close. Uh, again, don't be too pushy. Uh, your number needs to be calculated. We went over that as well. Think about where you want to um, acquire the parks and I'd strategically do an area code in that area. If you're looking for a couple different key states, maybe you find a centrally located um, uh, area code as well. Uh, 800 number, it's not personal. It, it, that just kind of conveys that you're this big operation, this big company. You know, 1-800, we buy parks. Well, I'd rather buy from a small town person if you're going to send me a postcard. So, so it, it just, it warms up the feeling and it's simply more personal. Uh, my personal PowerPoints. So if you haven't gotten my cheat sheet, what I'm going to do is I can send you a link for that. I've got a digital version I can give you literally for seven bucks and I've got a ton of videos in there. Um, probably close to a hundred different forms and that's going to have my own personal uh, PowerPoints that I use. Feel free to use them. Uh, you know, if you buy them, they're your they're yours. Just simply just change up the phone numbers. Uh, pretty much copy, cut, and paste, and that's all you got to do. And um, what would hold them back from calling? Now, again, if 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 you look at their current park, they may feel bad. Uh, you know, ninety percent of investors that send out postcards there will take city water and city sewer. Duh, so will everybody else. So what if they have a septic? Or what if they have something else that's, that's not as desirable? What if they have a lot of park-owned homes? Or what if they're at 50% occupancy? What you need to do is you need to be strategic. Um, you need to make them feel comfortable, make them feel safe. Um, it's okay. Um, it's okay if your park has a lower occupancy. Um, you know, we look at all parks um, we love turnaround parks. Feel free to give us a call. Um, and again, don't don't let them feel that, you know, what a lot of investors do is they'll put, we're looking for parks from 20 to 60 spaces. Now, if what if they have a 15 space park that's like <laughs> just a badass park? Well, now you box them out. They're not going to want to call you or what if they have an 80 or 90 space park that it's completely paid off and you, again, you box them out. You know, when you say we prefer this, we prefer that, you know, this is what we're looking for, leave it open-ended because you don't know what you're gonna get. So again, make them feel comfortable, add value to them. Um, and again, uh, some other documents in the cheat sheet that I have is uh, a document that I created and it's, Here's the thing is, is fully 82% of our parks were through owner financing. And um, I was talking to a great friend today, and, and what we went over is 100% of those, those parks, not one of the owners said they're willing to carry paper. The key is, is, is to really get inside their, their psyche, their mindset, figure out what they're looking for, share the benefits of why they may not want to sell their park cash, they're going to be dealing with huge capital gains and they're they're in their golden years. They maybe they're really just looking for a good, steady, consistent cash flow. So it's completely up to you um, to to do that and to convey yourself for them. Uh, what I wanted to do, and again, put yourself in the owner's shoes. Um, you know, what do they want to see? Think about think about them. What what are they looking for? You know, they're 
probably looking for a personal picture. Um, just what can you do to, to really set yourself apart from the comp competition? And, and we pretty much went over that as well. The postcard has to be personal, has to be honest, and, and definitely stories are great. Uh, you know, looking to move to the area, we just acquired a park in the area, looking to acquire a few more. So just be intentional, be honest, um, definitely open yourself up as well. That's where you're going to get the, the connections as well. Uh, postcards cost money. Holy smokes, do I have just stories after stories. So this is literally the stacks and stacks of papers when I was looking for deals. Now, Depending on who you use, there's a lot of different companies out there. Um, where I screwed up at the beginning is, so this right here is Kansas City, for example. What you want to do is you want to find the areas that you're interested in pursuing. Now, here's what I mean. I've had, I've mailed out thousands upon thousands of postcards and so many owners have called me back. Um, you know, much to my disappointment that the their park was five spaces um, the population was 426. There was one Piggly Wiggly gas station, um, and, and that's it. And, and it was a great deal. The unemployment was, but the unemployment was, you know, 15%. So it's like, what do you do? There, there's nothing you can do about it. So learn from my lesson and my mistake. Focus in, when, when you're working on your postcards, and we'll get into my spreadsheets in a moment, when you're working on your postcards, Focus in on the areas that you're looking for. Um, if if it's a if it's a city that that's 500 population, and then you know the 20 miles around there, that's also a small population. What I do is I'll put those red in my spreadsheets, um, just to pretty much um, have those to where that's definitely what I don't want to do in my mailing, but I still won't delete them. Now, uh, what I do to to find deals when it comes to postcards is. Step number one, identify the key state. Now, the, the first thing that you want to do is you want to stay away from the, the rent control states, and there's not a whole lot of them out there. Just Google um, rent control states. I can even share some documents with you as well. I've got those in the cheat sheet if you're interested in it. Again, that's seven bucks. I've got a hundred forms for you. Uh, second is you, you want landlord friendly states as well. That's a huge key component. So once you identify those, uh, your next step that, that I personally did when I started was identify the top 20 uh, MSAs, the top 20 metros in the state. Um, what I did is I, I leveraged my virtual team for that. And again, if, you, if you're interested in working with my team directly, reach out to me, let me know. Uh, Tony at parkplaceedu.com. Have them do the research. So take Kansas City, for example. Now, what I did is um, or take Kansas, I should say, what are the top 10 or 15 metros and have that population? And as you can see here, this circle, it's like I'm huge on systems and, and you're going to learn that from me, but talk about old school. I literally took a protractor and what I did is, here's the thing is, ask yourself, how far are your residents going to drive? Now, they're not going to drive that far to work. Um, I'd say 20 miles. So, so what I do is, if you're looking for a park in the huge metro, they're going to carry a massive premium. So the, the secret is to find every single park within a 20-mile radius within that metro. And that's what I did. So as you can see, I've got green here with the circles. So you got some cities, 35,000 population. Um, some cities, 5,000 population. So you can see I checked those off. Um, some cities, 25,000. So what I do is I'd focus and I'd, I'd reach out to those cities um, when, it came, when it comes to marketing with postcards. Uh, game plan, that's huge. Just identify the states. And, and, and I drove that home just in the last few minutes as well uh, that you want to market to. Um, again, the, the person that chases too many rabbits catches none. Uh, as you hone in on the area, the metros, you're going to find out that there may be only a few hundred parks in that, in that given area. So just focus intentionally with everything that you have in that geographic area. Um, so what I do is it's, I, I do everything that I possibly can. 
reach out to owners, suppliers, dealerships, transporters, um, just anything that you possibly can in that geographic area to, to definitely hone in and source as many deals as you possibly can. Reach out to brokers, uh, reach out to small, pop, small mom and pop realtors, just, just do a massive marketing campaign to that area and I can pretty much almost guarantee you that you're gonna uncover some really good stones. Time cost. It, it, it takes a while to build it out, I'm not gonna lie. You, you definitely need time to focus intentionally and one of the things is, is you know, maybe you just get up 30 minutes earlier in the morning and, and focus on your marketing plan and exactly what you wanna do. You, you have to write it down though, you gotta set goals you can't just, again, I talk about it a lot, you can't just drift. It just really doesn't work that way. Split testing, we're going to get into that a little bit more in, in some other videos, but split testing is essentially, say you mail a postcard and you have your, your one phone number, okay, from Grasshopper. Well, what you'd want to do is you could do, say instead of a postcard, you could do a yellow letter, and do a different phone number and a different email. Now, you have two different avenues to split test. To, to have an accurate split test, what you want to do is you want to market, you want to market to the same audience as well. So say you spent hundred dollars marketing postcards with this phone number. You want to you want to track how many responses back you got from that hundred dollars. And then now you want to market hundred dollars to that exact same audience three or four months down the road with something different, maybe a yellow letter, and then track those responses as well. And that's essentially what split testing is. And the, the way to be successful, you have to split test, you have to refine, and you have to adjust, and then just completely rinse and repeat process. Uh, and again, we, we, we spoke a bit, a bit about this, how to save thousands of dollars. Don't don't send a postcard to an owner that you know you're you're not at least interested in looking at the deal, um, and and it's tough. It, the your areas need to be highly targeted. It needs to fall within the metro. It needs to fall within the radius, and uh, you're gonna save you're gonna save a ton. I literally thousand thousand dollar mailings, and I probably got a dozen calls on just exceptional deals that. I just simply couldn't even consider it's again if the if the pop and, and believe you me I don't know where you live right now but there's a lot of areas out there where the population is 150 I'm not exaggerating all right so you're gonna have a lot of bad addresses and that's just kind of part of the game uh, so what you want to do is is you want to figure out what are you gonna do with those bad addresses when, when they come your way do you want to use your personal mailing address and then have them go there um, I mean that that's a, it's a little bit personal. Uh, I initially did that. Or do you want to use a PO box and have them go there? So that's definitely something to think about. One of the companies that I use, and I can send you the link as well, is I use Virtual Post Mail, and what that is is it's a third-party mailing company. And what what you do is is they give you a PO box, and then any of the bad you can use this for anything. I mean, literally, they can even deposit and cash checks for you. You can use this for your taxes. I mean, for anything and everything under the sun. And what they do is, is they scan the documents for you. So what I do is I'll use virtual post mail and then I'll have, I don't keep anything personal in there. I use it just for marketing. I think it's about $10 a month. And what I'll do is I'll have our virtual team member log in there. And as you can see, We'd have to look at the other side of the card. So what they do is, is they scan it and they send you both sides of it. And what you want to do is you want to have your team member put this information, the park that you are looking at, in your spreadsheets. And then I identify that being red, meaning don't mark it to that again. And then what you want to do, we're gonna, we, I think we already covered GIS maps. You just want your virtual assistant or your team member to go in there. And, um, and, and, and look up the park and the address and the owner, and then just simply update the address. Uh, and again, what I do, reverse engineer your budget. Figure out what your budget is. Is it, is it $50 a month? I, I just figure out, hey, maybe $50 a month you do postcard mailings. Maybe $50 a month you do, you send a few postcards to um, uh, mobile home park transporters. 
maybe you, you wait a month and do um, you know mobile home park suppliers um, you know maybe you send out some some yellow letters as well so again the the, the, the biggest secret is is to do everything that you possibly can uh, I definitely set up set up a quarterly a quarterly system uh, you know seasonal um, Merry Christmas you know to our family from yours um, hey give you know give give your give your wife the the best Christmas gift ever of, of you know, uh, selling your park and, and, and traveling to, uh, shoot, I don't know, Costa Rica or, or the Caribbean. So New Year's, hey, uh, have, have a happy New Year's and uh, forget having to pay taxes next year. and Consider selling your park. Um, you're not going to have to deal with it. You can just have residual cash flow. Uh, holidays, again, you know, like Valentine's Day, uh, hey, give your sweetheart the best gift of, uh, um, you know, not having to deal with the park and, and, and traveling with your motorhome. So be unique, be authentic, be real. Competition. Uh, the competition is definitely doing this, but I don't feel like they're doing it consistently. Uh, it's, it's statistically been proven that when, when somebody doesn't get the results that they want or if somebody tells them no, over 80% of people quit the first time. The, the most successful people in this business, they're tenacious, they're sticking with it, and, and what they're doing is they're not squirreling out all over the place. They are honed in and focusing on the exact area that they're looking for, and they are not taking their foot off the gas pedal, and that's exactly what you want to do. Uh, so stay focused. And, and again, 3,000 plus counties um, in the U.S., um, 39,000 cities. So you, you really want to figure out, you know, what state, what county, what city, how many parks, and, and just stay tenacious and stay at it. And that's where you're really going to get your success. Um, what are the odds? Let's see here. What are the odds that investors are mailing where you are? Uh, unlikely. Definitely unlikely. So, so look at that above thirty nine thousand cities. So, never, never be fearful of your competition. Don't worry about that. Everyone's probably thinking the same dang thing. So, how many investors are there out there that are marketing to thirty nine thousand cities? I'm not one. Not one. Each of us have our own cities and our own counties and our own states. And there's there's enough to go around. You look at it. There's fifty thousand mobile home parks. Holy smokes! We just need one or two. So there's there's definitely um, in abundance to go around. So frequency, again, we spoke about this. Add value to them. If if you want to send them, and again, in my cheat sheet, um, I've, I've got, uh, you know, why consider carrying, you know, the, the benefits of, of owner selling. Um, you've got different ways to structure deals. I've literally got every form under the sun. Um, and again, how can I help? How can I help you add value? You know, do you, do you want to hop on a call and I can give you a free evaluation of your far, of your park? Just free, free, add value and be of service to them. And again, first, second, third, and fourth quarter frequency is the key to your success. There may be another investor that mailed a postcard there, but it's in the bottom of their desk because they did it four years ago. So the key is 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 definitely stay persistent. Um, and again, just to kind of recap, lesson learned, using your own cell phone number. Um, the owners, they're a bit savvier than you may think. So they're, they're going to look it up. All you have to do is, is just simply Google the number. And you, you want to build in a buffer between yourself. If you think about it, it's Christmas and you know, you're, you're, you're intimate, you're with your family or, it, or it's Thanksgiving. You don't want your phone blowing up and you know, you, you don't want to have to block all these numbers as well. So build in a buffer. And if you use something like Grasshopper, you can just have it go to voicemail. And then what you do is, is they leave a message. The message just simply gets transcribed. And then you get the email. <clears throat> Excuse me. So if it's busy, you can just simply call them back. Uh, okay. And let's see here. Think outside the box. Create a series. And, and we kind of went over that. So just, just be authentic. Be real. Send a postcard with 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 the Christmas tree. I mean, maybe have a goofy picture of yourself. Just just be real. It's it, let me ask you, how many postcards have you received from from marketers or um, you know, I, I get postcards in the mail all the time, um, just just from everything under the sun. And how long do you have? Well, 
you probably have like two seconds. And if you don't catch their attention in two seconds, they're probably just going to throw it away or not even look at it. So something's got to stick out. Something's got to be, you know, authentic, real. Um, I, I love pictures. I, I just, I love, um, you know, maybe good, unique colors. Um, again, think outside the box. Like we spoke about before tax season, maybe send something with, you know, a, a dollar bill or just something goofy to, to where they can save, to where it's going to catch their attention. That's the biggest thing. Uh, and again, we went over this. Where do you want to, um, the return center to go to? Think automation. Think leverage. Um, spoke to a great friend of mine today. And yeah, you could do your own P.O. box. But say you do a massive mailing. Do you want to go get those 100 postcards from your P.O. box? Uh, take your camera and, and snap the picture. That's, that's brain damage. So focus on the 80-20 rule and just think of terms of how to be more efficient and again, your, your own mailbox, that's personal. Um, I'm more of a fan of a virtual mailbox. Um, so tactic number seven, what I wanted to get into really quick here is kind of what I do with the spreadsheet. So let's see here. Let's take Idaho, for example. And again, if you're interested in this, I'm for the first time selling them. I've never done so before. What I have included in my spreadsheets with probably 10,000 hours, uh, uh, every single U.S. realtor, uh, population demographics of the city um, as well, uh, MHP management companies, MHP suppliers, MHP transporters, MHP dealerships, MHP brokers, uh, market data of the area. Uh, huge. We're going to be covering this as well. Is there a local Walmart in the area? Let's see here. So here you got Idaho, Blackfoot. Uh, we've got a park in Blackfoot as well. Local Walmart, yes. Um, area Vibes, livability. So instead of having to troll on all these websites, you have this at your fingertips, which is awesome. Unemployment rate, 3%. Local apartments, 3 That's huge. So what's your competition? Be, be fearful when you have hundreds upon hundreds of apartments in the area because that's your competition as well. Uh, average rent rate for apartments, you've got that as well. So just a ton of information. Um, MHP owners, let's see here. So again, let's go to, let's bump this up. So you've got Park City, Park State, Park Zip. What I did is I also added county assessors. And when you scroll over here, you got your livability score. You've got city population. You have population increase or decrease in the percentage rate. You've got city housing value, so you know the median income. You've got average rental rate for the area, uh, crime rate on an A to F scale. You've got a C plus, number of schools in the area, total apartments, um, average apartment cost. So we literally have, I mean, list upon list upon list. So if, if it's something that you're interested in, I've literally spent like 10,000 hours. Um, that is going to cover it for this video. And in the next video, we are going to get into... Tactic number seven, um, this is going to be a good one. This is when you start making calculated offers to, to sellers. You're, you're either going to piss them off or they're going to be like, whoa, I didn't know my park was worth that much. So strategically, you're doing that by design. You, you want to get them to call you. And, uh, and from there, you, you set the table and start to create the relationship as well. All right, that's going to cover for tactic six. I'm going to see you in tactic seven soon. And you have a great one. And I'll talk to you soon.